So let's talk about prep. This is something that I think is missed a lot when it comes to dealing with pulling a key. And like we talked about, a lot of times you're not going to be dealing with perfect footage. It's not going to be high bit rate, or it's going to have maybe a little bit of a noisy sensor, or there's going to be some other issues with it. So it's one of those things where prepping is an important aspect of this that can really change the output of your keys. The first really, really big one is denoising. I highly, highly recommend always denoising anything that you're going to pull a key on. Nuke has a good denoiser. I also like using neat videos, reduce noise. I find that it gives really, really stellar results. And don't be afraid to bake out that pass. Once you've denoised your footage, go ahead and render that out. Use that as another pass. The next sort of prep thing that you want to think about, and this relates back to color, is spill suppression. All of the keyers that are built for green and blue screens, most of them have some sort of built-in suppression. But you can also split that out separately. And I like to split that so that I'm doing my suppression on one side of my comp and I'm doing my alpha generation on the other and then I'm combining those. And I do that mostly because it allows me to now use multiple keyers. I don't have to worry about key mixing or different keyers fighting because they're using different kinds of suppression algorithms. I can just suppress on one side and then use my cumulative mat that I'm generating from however many keyers I need to punch out of that suppression. So here you can see this is a suppressed image. I usually just use the hue correct. There's lots of gizmos on Nukipedia. Um, you can even use some hacks like you know, I've seen some where people use a key light where they bump the screen color way up high and it basically creates a despilled image. And that's a trick. But again, I, I really just like a hue correct. I think it does a, a pretty good job. We'll reset it. Just create a new one. You know, a hue correct's really nice because you can use your color picker and see exactly where that image is occupying right here. So if we cover, we can see where our cat lives, most of his colors, and we can see our green. And then you can simply use the green suppression curve on that to start reducing your green. There's also saturation curves that are color-based. And you can start to desaturate that way. And you can really fine tune this, you know, greatly because you can zoom into these curves and, and get really, you know, have really high control over exactly what's happening. You know, you can see we've got a little bit of spill coming through here. So maybe we need to reduce our saturation or reduce our green suppression, you know, as we start to move into our yellow hues to help push that saturate, you know, push that green spill out of there. You can see here too, we have some motion blur and some semi-transparency. And so making sure that we're really, you know, pulling all the green out of those areas is a good thing to do too. Let's talk about some of the keyers themselves. So on the utility side and sort of more on the simplistic side, we have a handful of keyers that you're going to use, not necessarily to pull blue and green screens, but you're going to use them in your daily work. Maybe to grab the highlights on something or the shadows or something in the middle. The first one is a difference key. And a difference key, when you look at it in RGB, it doesn't do anything, but if you flip it into alpha, it's just giving you the pure difference from your A input to your B input. It has very simple controls. It simply has offset and gain. And offset, from a mathematical standpoint on this tool, is inverted. This is actually giving you a negative offset, so that's something to be aware of. Next up, we have our keyer. And this is a tool you're going to use all the time. This is where you pull your keys for your skies. You can combine it with other keyer nodes to create all kinds of interesting tools. You know, one of the ones that I really like that I, one of my first gizmos was I took two keyers and I pull a difference key between the output of those two keyers where I'm keying different channels. So this tool, pretty simple. We have a curve and we have our operation. And our operation lets us pick which channel or value we're keying against. So an easy way, say we, we don't know exactly where we want to key, we can actually look at this image in RGMB and really see where the most contrast lives. In this case, you can see our red channel. We have a lot of contrast between our screen and our cat. So if we wanted to use this to try and pull a traditional green screen key, we would select our red keyer. And now when we flip back to alpha, 
you can see that that now represents, it looks like our red channel without doing any work. We then have these sliders, so we can start to slide these until our alpha represents what we want it to. Another pro tip here, use your viewer to help you with keys. If you slide your gain up, you can see there's a lot of noise and chatter that isn't necessarily visible if you just look at it in your viewer plane. Same with your gamma. You can use both of those to really check and see where your noise might be happening. And this is a really important step because you might in be introducing some noise or some artifacts into the rest of your comp that you aren't aware of because you're looking at the other side of the screen. Another really important thing, and I, I see this happen pretty regular, most people, if you look at this keyer, it only runs from zero to one. So say we had our main footage here, and say it was actually a little bit over one, like it's some log footage where everything's clipped out. So here you can see we're looking at values around 1.6 to in our highlights. And we go to our keyer, and we look at our output, and we'll go to a straight luminance key here. We're basically clipped out here, and we're not going to get any more information. Like, we can't salvage more of this. But this keyer has these buttons here. If you actually click the minus, what it does is it quadruples your scale. So now our scale is running from 0 to 4. And we, it also reveals we have two more handles here. So you can actually grab a middle area of a key. So say you want something with just a value of between 0.6 and 0.5. You can use this key to build that. So you can see now we're actually not keying the super bright highlights. So we can just capture ribbons of color, or ribbons of values. So this is a really interesting thing that this can do. And it also has a button to do a straight invert. But I just wanted to show that because that's one of those features that not most people aren't necessarily even aware that this tool has that capability. But say we did want to just capture some of the bright, brighter highlights. You can see now we can really feather that, that input down. We're just catching those highlights without them clipping or without being forced. And I see a lot of artists just add a color correct or a grade node to bring everything into zero to one range so that they can use this keyer when really you just need to open the keyers range up using these buttons here. The other thing to note, and some of the keyers in Nuke work this way, the keyer node is unpre-multiplied by default. So now we have an alpha here, but if we flip back into RGB, we also have a full RGB image. So it's really important to make sure if you don't want to work unpre-multiplied, which I highly recommend working against unpre-multiplied because you don't know where things are happening, you want to use a pre-mult tool. And that pre-mult tool lets you see the result of your key punched out against the alpha. So here we can see what we're really getting versus looking at it here and having to toggle back and forth to our alpha to see where our affected areas are. This will also let you then use this as a pre-multiplied and over piece. So if you have four or five keyers, you can pre-multiply it out. Now everything lives by itself and you're not having to look at it through a merge to see exactly what's going on. The next keyer is the hue keyer. And this actually works very similar to a hue correct. We have an amount and we have our saturation threshold. This can be a really useful key for certain things like water or skin tones. And you can use our color picker to sample and it'll give you a representation in that area where your color is selected. And then you can modify your amount based on that curve. So if we look at the output, you can see as we move this, it changes our key. It's because we want more green versus less. And also be aware, this is set to invert by default. So you might, depending on what output you want, just be aware of that invert button. You know, in this case, we probably want to make the cat our solid alpha. And we can pull this to change how it grabs his fur. And then saturation amount. This is how much saturation is there, and the keyer will roll off if it's below that saturation threshold. So that's the hue keyer. Can be super useful. Again, denoising with all of these is very helpful. And it also generates an unpremultiplied image. 
So using a pre-malt tool is important if you're using this in a standard workflow. Last up on sort of what I would call the simple keyers, and this is actually built for blue screen, green screen, but it's a new addition to Nuke. This came out with Nuke Studio and it was built to be a sort of a real-time soft effect. And it's a GPU accelerated keyer. So you can create some really fast keys using this tool. And you can see this wasn't cached. And we obviously need to do a little more work on this key, but I just wanted to make people aware of it because if you're trying to do something quickly or you're having some performance issues or you just want to see if something's working or not, the chroma keyer is a great keyer for that. It has a couple options for output. It works similar to maybe I'd say a key light where you pick your screen color, you have your screen gain and screen balance, and then you have some white point, black point controls as well, as well as a couple of custom despill. So that's the chroma keyer. Definitely worth checking out, especially if you have a nice GPU. So let's move into some of the more complex keyers. And I am not an expert at all of these keyers. I primarily use Keylight and the IBK rig. I also have experience with Primat and the least amount of experience with Ultimat. And everyone has different opinions on which keyer is the best. Honestly, the keyer that's the best is the one that you can use the best. So if you have a lot of experience with Keylight and you can pull really good keys with Keylight, don't worry if somebody's telling you Primat's better. You know, if you can use Primat and get a better key than you can with Keylight, I would say use Primat. And there are some sort of use cases where one keyer might be better than the other. You know, I've, I've personally heard that Ultimat is great for semi-transparent things. For me, I never really learned Ultimat because the keying results I'm getting with my particular method work really well and I haven't needed to necessarily change that. But I definitely would check each of them out. You know, they all have different ways of working and you might just be more comfortable in one keyer or the other. So here we have Keylight. Keylight is a really good all-round keyer and you can pretty quickly get good results. It works similar to that chroma keyer in that we have a screen color, a gain, and a balance. Then we have some alpha bias and some despill bias. And then it gives us some options for controlling the mat. Those are clip black, clip white, which is really a compression you know, it allows us to compress the key. So if it's semi-transparent, it starts to, you know, compress it one way or the other. We have rollback, which actually just rolls off of the clip black or clip white that you've applied. So that'll help bring back a little bit of edge fidelity if you need it. It also has some dilate and softness tools, and then it has some despot. And despot helps pull away those little extra, extra bits you see around the edges. We then have some screen replacement, and then we have some tuning. The tuning on this is really powerful and can really change your key with just some very slight adjustment. You can see here, I'm just changing the way the gain is set on those and we're getting some pretty strong variances in our key. Then we have some masking operations and some crop operations. But all in all, Keylight's a pretty simple tool. It's pretty fast to learn. It doesn't have a lot of tabs and it does a pretty good job for most general purpose keying. The next up, and this is a keyer I really like, is the IBK Gizmo setup. And it actually comes as two tools. So it's the IBK Gizmo and it's an IBK color node. The IBK color node is generating a clean plate. And if you actually have a clean plate, you don't need an IBK color. You would just pipe your clean plate into the IBK Gizmo. And that's really where the IBK workflow shines is it's using a background input or a clean plate input to help pull a more accurate key. And I can show you how that works here. So we have our gizmo and we can select our screen type. C means it's inputting a clean plate of a green screen or pick is just a generic color. And I've actually picked this as a sort of an average of our green. And you can see by using the node, the IBK color node, we're getting a considerably less noisy image than we would if we just use a flat color, which is how most of the other keyers work. So that's a really awesome thing with this. The other thing that IBK does really, really well is it allows you to actually pull your other images through um, your background. So it's using the luminance in chroma and multiplying that times your semi-transparent areas. And what that means is it means it gives you transparent areas that you can see the background through. They don't become a flat despilled color. 
So your edge fidelity and the way you can integrate things with the IBK is really, really awesome. On the same token, it is a very noisy keyer as keyers go. You can see we have a lot of chatter in here. That's why it's important to know exactly what you're trying to achieve because this keyer will give you excellent edge fidelity, but it will give it to you at the cost of noise. So you can see we're really pulling out whiskers. You know, we're, we're getting a lot of detail that maybe is harder to get with some of these other keyers. You know, we can see all of his hair on his chest. We can see the whiskers in very clean detail. And again, this is not denoised either. Once we denoise it, it, it takes it up another level. So then we have Ultimat. And like I said, Ultimat I've heard is very good for transparency. And it has a, just a little bit different approach. So you have a density, screen correction, it does shadow spills. Each of those is set up as their own tab. And you kind of work through the ones you need and you turn off the ones you don't. And then we have Primat. And Primat is a, what I would call a color pick based tool where you have a set of operations. You start at the top and you work through them. You know, anywhere you have extra noise, you scrub the noise, it samples it, and then it removes it. If you need to add a little more foreground fill, you select that option, you, you color pick those areas and it adds more foreground. Once you get to know it, it works pretty well. I find it to be a little bit more noisy than sort of a, a similarly put together key light, but a lot of people really like Primat. So those are our complex keyers. And there's also a few others out there that are third party. There's also some gizmos that you can get from Nukipedia. Definitely check those out. I mean, the idea here is to get as clean a key that still gives us edge fidelity as quickly as possible.